Uh, what about Troy Parrott's move to Ipswich? Good move, you think? And uh, we are obviously going to talk about that. So Troy has left Millwall, which he was there on loan, and he's gone to Ipswich on loan now. You know, he's dropped down in the league, but I think it makes total sense. The fact that he's going to be surrounded by Irish lads within the squad. There's Aaron Drinan there, there's Alan George, there's Mark McGuinness. Uh, Mark McGuinness is on loan. So he's got a few Irish lads there that can make him feel at home. Alan Judge might have been in a squad with Troy already. I think he was because I, I vaguely remember being at a press conference with Robbie Brady and Alan Judge talking about Troy. So I think he'll know him from then. So that could help him obviously settle in there quicker. He would have had Shawnee Williams and uh, Dan Mac Dan Mac uh, I can't even say his name. Dan McNamara came back from uh, his loan spell in Scotland and he would have been his mate there, but he didn't seem to really fit in at Millwall for whatever reason. Got recalled and sent back out then to to Ipswich. Gary, what do you think of this move? Do you think it's a good move? Yeah, I do think it's a good move, Paul. I mean, he was in a Millwall team and he well, he was in and out of a Millwall team. He was getting 60 minutes here, 30 minutes there. And they're not playing well and they hadn't been creating chances. So it can't have been good for Troy's confidence. And uh, I mean, I've said this, I'm, I'm probably, uh, people are sick of me saying at this stage, but uh, Troy needs as much experience as possible playing men's football. And it's much more beneficial to him than playing for Tottenham under 23s or anything like that. And yeah, it would have been better if it's in the championship, but the way things were going at Millwall, I think he's better off going to Ipswich. He is dropping down a division, but hopefully he's in a team that, that will be creating more chances and, and scoring some goals and, and give Troy a chance to score a couple of goals as well and get his confidence back. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see the Irish lads there, but I, I think that's kind of a bonus for him. Uh, Mark McGuinness is definitely one for the future as well. And uh, I don't know what Paul's views are with, with him in, uh, having a future in the Arsenal side, but um, he's certainly very highly rated and seems to be doing really well at Ipswich. It might be difficult for us to get a, a chance to watch Troy now because I don't think Ipswich are going to be on Sky too often. But uh, we will get highlights on Sky Sports News and on the the championship programme. So, um, yeah, I think it's a great move and hopefully he'll get plenty of game time and, and bang a couple of goals in and uh, still keep, keep in Stephen's head for, for March. Mm, Paul, what, what are your thoughts on the move? Yeah, I, I think it's a good move. We actually talked about it ourselves a couple of weeks ago. League one is a good standard of play and uh, obviously with Troy as well, the championship is very tough. Millwall obviously have a, a very competitive side. They usually do quite well. And uh, I think it's a good move. I mean, Ipswich are a team who will be fighting for the playoffs towards the end of the season, you'd expect. Maybe not automatic. It depends on the points. But, um, yeah, I think it's a good move. I think he'll definitely get opportunities with the amount of games they have in that league, same as the championship. And, uh, as you said, he didn't really fit into Millwall. It seemed like that anyway. Wasn't really getting an opportunity. So, I think it's a good move. And, obviously, you mentioned the Irish lads that are there already. That'll be good for him as well. Yeah, uh, that's and I think that's probably a reason why he's gone because he, he's gone to a club where, you know, they've they've always had a bit of Irish there, whether it's Matt Holland, Mick McCarthy, or whatever. Uh, there's always been a bit of Irish about the club, and that's probably another reason why he's went. You know, I, I wouldn't imagine it's too far from where he is as well. Um, he turns 19, I think, on Thursday, so he's still got a lot of time behind him, and people seem to forget that. People are like, "Oh, he has to go." Yeah, his career. I've seen people saying his career was over already and all this nonsense and i'm just like why do people do this why do people say that someone at 18 is his career is ruined because it didn't work out a loan move at millwall like i just i don't understand this to be to be honest it actually does me head in yeah it's um it's a tough one to go on a bit like i mean it's it's always the case with irish fans as well isn't it? it's like oh it's a disaster there's a disaster when something doesn't go right you know what i mean listen that's football can't be in the team constantly, especially in a in a league where there's 46 matches. You know, you're going to have to chop and change at some stage. So it's not going to play every week. So I think with those people, they've just got to relax. Yeah, Gary, yeah I mean, Troy, you... he is very young. I mean, as you say, he only turns 19 this week and uh, he still has plenty of time. I suppose part of the issue is because there's been so much high hype around Troy since he was about 15 he's really been on the radar he's been hailed as the next new superstar of irish football and 
so maybe there's a bit too much attention being paid to him and uh, maybe too much is expected too soon. But uh, so, look, he has a great chance. Uh, hopefully he will play uh, and get a lot of game time with Ipswich. And I think a couple of goals could make an awful difference to his confidence and to how he's perceived. And uh, we can take stock again at the summer and see what Tottenham decide to do then. Yeah, I think I think that's the I think that's what's going to happen. He might end up again going back out on loan to Ipswich again if if Mourinho feels like he's not going to get game time at Spurs. I mean, they have Vinicius there as well. He's going to come in for Harry Kane. So, uh, you know, when when Troy was there, he was playing everyone but Troy Parrott as the striker. He's playing Lamella, and I think he played Deli Ali up front as well. Um, he just didn't think he was ready. So maybe this will make him grow up a little bit. You know, it's still going to be rough in League One. It's still going to be tough for him to, to battle with defenders. But I just thought at Millwall, it seemed like a good fit at the start. But uh, obviously, and evidently, as time went on, it just clearly wasn't. And, you know, I, I don't know whether it was his call or Spurs' call or Millwall's call. But if it was his call, I, th- I think it's very good of him to say, you know what, it's not working out here. Let me go somewhere else try it out somewhere else so I think but well, I haven't heard or, or, or of anything about it but I think it's good that he's gone and even just dropped down a level just to get a couple of goals get the confidence back up and then you never know you'd be looking at a totally different player in a couple of weeks you know exactly yeah that's that's a great point and I mean it's it's a good division to go into I think especially for a young player like that you've got some senior pros who've been playing for a few years some big clubs are down there as well so he'll be pitting himself against you know clubs who they'll be fighting right up against and teams who will probably go to the championship next year as well. Clubs like Portsmouth, Ronan Curtis is there. He's doing very well. Probably be directly up against him in the Ireland squad a lot of the time too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good move. It's only positive. And uh, if it wasn't working out at Millwall, it's the right decision. The only thing I would say is they're 11th in League One at the moment. Um, I think that's just because the way the live games, I'm on live score here and saying... They're on 36 points and then the next up from them is Oxford on 37 and then the rest of the teams are on 40 points uh, all the way up to Sunderland and then 43. So they're not that far off when you spoke about Portsmouth there. But that's just a live table that could probably change by the end of the end of the evening. So um, they're not far away and maybe they're looking at Troy as the person to score the goals to get them up, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean... Um... As you know, with the, those three divisions, League Two, League One, the Championship, could change. If a team gets a couple of wins in a row, they're in the playoffs. But if a team gets 10 wins in a row and a couple of draws, they're top of the league. That's how it changes. We've seen, you look at the year Villa came up, their form, they were near the bottom when Dean Smith came in. And then all of a sudden, they're in the playoffs spots and they won the playoffs. You look at the year Reading came up a few years back as well, it was the same thing. They ended up winning the league. So, again, a couple of wins put together, scoring a couple of goals, anything can happen. Mm, so yeah, and I mean, it, it's a good point about the big clubs, Paul. I mean, Ipswich, they've been, they've been champions of England. They've won a European trophy. Uh, you have Sunderland there. Sunderland have won as many English titles as Manchester City and Chelsea, by the way. Um, so, obviously, a massive <laughs> club. Um, there's a Charlton. It's not long, long ago that Charlton was sixth in the Premier League. And uh, and they're all in or in or there in or around the playoffs, or actually just just outside the playoffs, if I remember correctly. Last time I looked at the table, and uh, it's a very good point, as as Paul Tierney said, that a couple of wins and you're you're right in the mix in the playoffs. And uh, Ipswich have had a couple of disappointing results lately, so I think it's ideal for Troy. I'm sure they're looking for him to to start for them to go and score the goals, and. Uh, Hopefully get them at least into the playoffs, and uh, yeah, sure, we'll we'll see what happens. It's uh, it, it's it's going it's going to be tough. I mean, it's uh, as as I keep probably repeating myself though, but it will be tough for him playing men's football. He will get kicked quite a bit down in League One as well, but uh, it, it'll certainly stand to him, and uh, I, I think it'll do him no harm at all. And hopefully, I, I would actually hope that next season he's playing at least at championship level, if not in the Premier League. But I think it depends how the next few months go. And uh, we'll have a much better idea in the summer where, where we stand. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's going to depend on how he does 
this season to see okay can he make that jump up for next season and, and probably go to championship after an end of a good season say um or if all goes well and Ipswich maybe go up get promoted then there's a chance of him going there he, he know the club that type of way you know so there's there is a lot of things can change i know we say this nearly every episode but there's a lot of football to be played and um you know if he can get himself right and get himself confident and scoring goals then who's to say you know he, he doesn't go there next season or if he does that well and starts scoring banging in the goals then spurs actually give him a chance so it will be interesting to see how it goes and as well as that if um if steven picks him because every time he's been fit steven's picked him so it will be interesting to see if he'll pick him even though he's playing league one you know yeah definitely yeah, i think Sorry, Gary, you go on, you go on. No, go ahead, you're okay, sorry. Okay, right. well, I think uh, if you look at, like, Ronan Curtis was getting in regularly as well, and he started a couple of times. So if he hits form in that division, I see there's no reason for him to get in. As we said last year uh, with James Collins, who did come in a couple of times with Luton, he was playing very well for Luton. That was the championship as well, like the lower part of the championship too, and he was banging in goals. Um I mean, I, I think whatever level, like I know we all we all want them all to be playing in the Premier League, the highest level they possibly can. Uh, but again, you've got to pick the players in form or at least half the squad has to be players in form and then work with the rest. That's my opinion for international football anyway and then go from there. Gary? Yeah, they, the one issue I would have though is that uh, it, it is significantly a, a lower level. I mean, it is the third tier of English football. But what what is standing to try is it is a problem position for us. I mean, we're not we're not creating chances and we're not taking chances, and that's why if Troy is playing well for Ipswich and scoring goals, I think he will definitely be in Stephen's thinking. But ideally, we'd like to be picking or attacking players from the Premier League, or if not, at least from the, the top half of the Championship. But look, we don't have a lot of options at the moment, so we'll see We'll see what happens. I hope Troy gets to start, and I hope he really could do with a couple of goals as well as a confidence boost. Yeah, let us know your thoughts anyway in the comments on whether Troy's move to, to Ipswich is, is a good one in your opinion and you know what what are your thoughts on it? Should he stay at Millwall? Are you happy seeing him at Ipswich? Can't even say it anymore. 